There are many concerns from uh, the church members and from our countrymen. Concerning the economy of our country. And uh, many people have been asking me, man of God, who is advising the president? People are not asking who is praying for the president because the pastors are praying. The church is praying. The question they're asking, who is advising the president? Meaning, it is not prayer alone that the president requires. He also requires advice. And that could also mean that no matter how much you pray, if the advisors are wrong, your prayer may never see the light of the day. I will request you to pray for him in line with First Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1. But I will also advise him. You know, many pastors are not ready to speak because the president is a creation of the church. And they said he was prayed into power. And therefore, when you may want to advise him this soon, people may think we are impatient, that we should be patient. I want to use some scientific terminologies to explain my wisdom. I had the privilege of becoming a high school teacher some time back. And there is something in high school they call entry point. And it is believed that entry point determines the end results. In a school where I worked, I remember my principal working to improve the performance of the school. Something they call MSS. The MSS of the school was too low and the principal decided to improve on that MSS. But majority of the students that we had in school were low performers because their entry point was too low. The best could score a D. Yet the, in, the principal wanted to improve on the performance of the school. And any wise principal who wants to improve the performance of a school. Sometimes you know, if you have very low students, there is no serious miracle however hard you work. So there is something they call poaching. That you go to a, another school, you pick on performing students. Then you bring them to your school, probably put them under some fair dietary and uh, free school fees, or you can go for repeaters who performed better. My principal used to go to other schools, neighboring, that were performing. Then he picks on performing students whose parents had difficulties in paying school fees. Then he could bring them to our school where I was teaching. And they, were, they could be attracted with that free fee. And then we could go for those students who performed very well. But they were waiting to join university. Probably they had a B minus. Then you tell them you can just come. We can give you some token. They repeat in your school. And at the end of the year, you have your student who score E. And these new students that you borrowed who score A or B. 
So at the end of the day, the MSS of the school improves courtesy of the poached students. But however tough you are as a principal, you cannot say for me, I will maintain my E students because I know them, I have been with them long enough, they will perform anyway. The only thing I'm telling our president, I am not sure that the students you have in your class right now are performers. I'm not sure. I'm appealing to you to check around neighboring schools. Check around neighboring schools. As a poor student, even if you give them a leakage, they will fail. A poor student will always put the right answer on a wrong question. This is my wisdom. Your excellence. What we are praying for you. That's the best we can do. But go around the neighboring schools. Find out the students who are performing. Include them. And, and uh, there is something we used to call the red line. When a student is a very poor performer, you draw a red line and you request them to seek help from or some other schools. Please, your excellence, begin. It is not too early. Begin drawing a red line. Otherwise, there will be so many E's in your school. So many E's. <laughs> Our prayer is that your school may improve. If you decide to maintain your E students only, I'm not saying that all of them are, are performing E, if you decide to maintain them, I can assure you the results will be a disaster. And very soon, what I am trying to tell the president is to avoid parents marching to school. You know when you see parents saying, the principal must go. You know principals don't teach. The performance of any principal is determined by the students and the teachers. So you motivate the teachers, but you must also determine the entry point of the students. However much you motivate the teachers, if the students are coming when they have taken a busa, they can't perform. So what we are trying to tell the president, avoid the parents marching to the gate of the school. The principal must go. Principal must go. Uh -uh. But when the students perform very well and the teachers have overworked, the credit comes to the principal. What you want to say, my Uyu principal, Nim Zur, is a good principal, and you can be promoted to the next school. So, Your Excellency, next time you come, you, you come to this school as the principal, make sure you check on the entry point of your students. Me, I'm not talking about your ministers. I'm talking about the students I saw you in the class with. God bless you.